The Polar Plus is the perfect device to control your Tone X1, especially if you want built-in foot switches. And today I'm gonna to show you how to build your own, all of the steps and exactly what's needed. So let's check it out. To build your Polar Plus, you'll need the 3D printed enclosure. It's a three piece enclosure, same as the Polar Mini with a top, a middle plate, and then a bottom part. I've already put the heat set inserts in here. They are four millimeter tall M3 threaded heat set inserts. And we've got the exact dimensions you'll need for the enclosure design linked in our GitHub repo for the build. You'll need four M3 seven millimeter screws for the fi uh, final enclosure assembly, four M2 nine millimeter screws for mounting the PCB carrier board as well uh, with the LCD. You will need the custom uh, PCB here, which handles our input power conditioning, foot switches, as well as the MIDI input. You will need the Waveshare 1.69 inch non-touch ESP32 board, a 30 millimeter JST cable with opposing connector orientation, as you can see there. Two foot switches. We recommend these ones. They're extremely common in many guitar builds. They're a momentary switch. You will need the nut and washer fastening for those, as well as a two pin JST PH connector. This is a two millimeter pitch connector. Isn't always standard with these switches, so you may need to grab the wiring harnesses and solder those yourselves, as well as the Allen keys to assemble them. Let's get started. So the first thing to do, Take your foot switches and install them into the top part of the enclosure, like so. You can hold those in place and put the spring washer on there. If you're using a normal washer and not a spring washer, that's also fine. The compliance of the, uh, the plastic will certainly have enough springiness to keep that nut tightly locked in place. And you don't want to over torque these when you're installing them because it can often feel like you need to really wrench down on them but you need to remember that it is a plastic enclosure and even with a metal enclosure you can def easily deform a metal enclosure by over torquing nuts on a foot switch like this as well as decrease the reliability of the foot switch so just moderately finger tight with um, a wing nut fastener similar to to this is fine now with our foot switches installed We'll put that aside and turn our attention to the carrier plate. This is where our carrier PCB will attach to the LCD. Take your JST 12 pin SH connector and plug it into the carrier board. The carrier board is going to go on this smooth side of the plate here and it's designed to sit flat with cutouts there for the through hole pins. Then Take your LCD and be really careful not to touch this delicate ribbon cable, uh, ribbon cable here. I try and avoid putting any contact or pressure on that entire front surface of the display board. Then connect it to the JST board like so. Carefully bend it around so the LCD is aligned with the printed standoffs of the middle plate there and the carrier board is sitting flat. Take one of your M2 screws, feed it through the carrier board through the hole in the middle plate. And this will get our alignment approximately where it needs to be. I like to just loosely thread this screw into the hole just to keep things in place while we get the rest of the screws in. And don't tighten it all the way up because we still wanna have some wiggle room to make sure our LCD board is in the correct position. Then do the diagonal. So straighten your carrier board up, insert another M2 screw onto the diagonal hole and that will get our alignment just right so we can insert the other two screws. Again, now we can tighten that up all the way and it does not to need to be over tightened at all. Just finger tight is fine. Take our other two screws, put them in and fasten those accordingly. Now we specify nine millimeter M2 screws for this. Make sure you're not using ones that are any longer than 10 millimeters maximum because otherwise you can risk damaging the LCD board and they won't thread with anything lower than an eight millimeter screw. Now take our assembled middle plate. We're going to insert it into the top part of our design. Take care to note the USB connector orientation with the cutout there and we're going to feed the foot switch wires through these two holes of the middle plate 
passing those through and then slide the middle plate in like so. There's these alignment pegs on the carrier plate which mate with these cutouts here to keep everything locked into place. Take your foot switches and plug them into the connectors. It doesn't overly matter which one you plug into, but we've standardised that this right foot switch in this orientation plugs into the bottom most connector. Take these wires and just gently bend them down so they lie flat like so. Now, you can hold those cables in place. These wires are a little bit longer than is strictly necessary, but they're standard for what we use across our products, and the extra wire length isn't going to impact anything here. Take the bottom part of the enclosure, and you'll note that the 3.5mm MIDI input connector sticks out through the enclosure, so we just need to angle this slightly to get the connector through the hole before sitting the bottom part flat. Now take your M3 7mm screws, fasten one, and again being careful not to over tighten them here. Repeat for the remaining three screws. And there we have our assembled Polar Plus. You can put the faceplate on like so. The faceplate is printed in a particular orientation by default. When you plug it in, your device may be upside down with the display relative to the labelling of the faceplate. Now that's not a problem, you can swap the display, you can flip it 180 degrees in the config editor to match the faceplate, and you can set that up however best suits your cable routing in your setup. So that's it, building your very own Polar Plus, the ultimate MIDI controller for your Tonex one in this footprint. It's that easy and if you have any questions leave a comment below, check out the GitHub repo for the full bill of materials and leave any questions and we'll do our best to get back to you. Happy building, see you next time.